Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyanan Chana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaihevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Kapila Shiksha. This evening we're going to begin a look at chapter 26. Chapter 26 is entitled Fundamental Principles of Material Nature. So, isn't that a beautiful picture on the cover of our Srimad Bhagavatam? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. You want to know about creation? You can find out everything just by looking at the cover of the Srimad Bhagavatam, just from the cover alone. You can know about creation, about the spiritual world and the material world. And so, okay. So, glorification. Yeah. All right. So, more, more questions by Devahuti. Devahuti had asked, what is the jnana by which one understands tattvas? <laughs> that was asked in verse 29 of chapter 25. And it's answered in this chapter, 26, as well as in the next chapter, 27. And then another question, what is the yoga mentioned by you which is armed, which is aimed at the Lord for liberation? How many limbs does it have? And that is answered in chapter 28. So you can see Devahuti's questions take up chapters 26, 27, 28. <coughs> ah. The Lord glorifies Sankhya. After hearing, Sri Maitreya said, after hearing the statement of his mother, Kapila could understand her purpose and he became compassionate towards her because of being born of her body. He described the Sankhya system of philosophy, which is a combination of devotional service and mystic realization as received by disciplic succession. So this is how Srila Prabhupada describes, or this is how Maitreya describes Sankhya philosophy. Mm. 
and we spoke about how devotional service is greater than mukti. Lord Kapila said, the senses are symbolic representations of the demigods and their natural inclination is to work under the direction of the Vedic injunctions. As the senses are representatives of the demigods, so the mind is a representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The mind's natural duty is to serve from text 32 of chapter 25. Then we ask list, list reasons explaining how bhakti is superior to yoga and mukti. And you can get the answers from text 32, 33, 34, 36 and 41. And then the chapter finishes. Lord Kapila prescribes Tivrina Bhakti, Tivra Bhakti, right? Tivrina Bhakti Yogena, Man, Mano Maya Arpitam Stiram. Therefore, persons whose minds are fixed on the Lord engage in the intensive practice of devotional service. That is the only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. And Prabhupada's purport, first of all, the mind should be engaged at the lotus feet of the Lord very steadily and naturally because the mind is a master of the senses. When the mind is engaged, all the senses become engaged. That is bhakti yoga. That's the purport of text 44, which was the last verse, the last verse, the last purport of the chapter 25. The importance of the mind the master of the sense, and the mind must be engaged. Then all the senses become engaged. And this is the principle of bhakti yoga. And how to engage the mind? It should be engaged at the lotus feet of the Lord, very steadily and naturally. How to engage the mind at the lotus feet of the Lord? Well, take up some humble service. Okay, going ahead, connection with the previous chapter. Being requested by his mother, Lord Kapila first described Bhakti Yoga, which is the heart of Sankhya. Now, in this chapter, 26, he will equip us with the acts of knowledge by which we can cut material attachments and then practice pure devotional service. Are you all ready to cut the axe, to use the axe to cut our material attachments? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, you, yes, Maharaj. No, you all say yes, I know. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Don't blame me. Connection with previous in chapter twenty six, Kapila will discuss about Gyan, Sankhya, the manifestation and characteristics of the elements such as Mahatattva, the universal form composed of those elements, and thus being brought to life by the entrance of the Lord. So this is the subject matter of chapter 26 in answer to question 3. All right, there's an overview. First of all, first eight verses, liberation by understanding the different categories of the absolute truth. Liberation. 
by understanding the categories of the Absolute Truth. Just like we know Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan, the different categories of the Absolute Truth. And then the chapter goes on, 9 to 18, we'll describe the 24 elements and the time factor. And then verses 19 to 30, well, the 24 elements, remember, we heard from the Bhagavad Gita, so there's nothing new there. We're going to hear about their different characteristics, more details than in Bhagavad Gita. And then 19 to 30, the manifestation of the subtle elements from the Mahatattva. The subtle elements being mind intelligence, false ego, how they manifest from the Mahatattva, and then the evolution of the gross elements from ether to earth. We notice that creation, of course, comes about from subtle to gross. Sometimes people have it, they, they think it's the other way around. But in Srimad Bhagavatam it's very clear that it, the creation is from subtle to gross. The Christian Bible, Srila Prabhupada heard a quote from the Christian Bible. In the Christian Bible it said, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God, and the Word was with God, like that. But in the beginning was the Word. And when Prabhupada heard that, he said, yes. He said, that is our philosophy. He said, we agree with this from Srimad Bhagavatam. Creation comes about from subtle to gross. So the subtlest element is ether. And in, with ether, you have the ethereal element, which is the ear. With ether, there is sound. Sound is there in ether. There's nothing else. There's no, there's no air, there's no fire, there's no water, there's no earth. There is, within ether, there is sound. There's no, none of the other sense objects. There's no taste, there's no smell, there's no touch. There's no form. But there is sound. So that's the beginning of the creation. So Lord Kapila describes also the evolution of the gross elements. And then at the end of the chapter, from text 50 up to the end, text 72, Lord Kapila describes the universal coverings and the universal form and how the Lord has to enter into the universal form to awaken it. All right, so benefits of hearing Sankhya, the first verse. The personality of Godhead Kampila continued, My dear mother, now I shall describe unto you the different categories of the Absolute Truth, knowing which any person can be released from the influence of the modes of material nature. That is liberation. When you get released from the modes of material nature, then you are a liberated soul. So Lord Kapila is describing to his mother how she can become a liberated soul by understanding the different categories of the Absolute Truth. The benefits of hearing Sankhya. I will describe the different features of the material elements, knowing which, and here we have one, two, three points, which are all the benefits of hearing Sankhya. So first one, knowing which one is freed from the influence of the modes of material nature, from the material modes. So that is, I said, liberation, to get free from the modes of material nature. 
Even goodness, we want to be freed from the mode of goodness. We want to come to the level of Shuddha Sattva, pure goodness. Then second benefit, knowing which one attains perfection of self-realization. Self-realization and Krishna consciousness are non-different. If one is actually self-realized, then he will know that he is a servant of Krishna and he will engage in the service of the Lord. And then the third point, knowing which one cuts the knot of attachment to the material world. So that's what we're all interested in, right? We want to cut that attachment to the material world. We're all eager for that, to get free from the material world. Oh, wonderful, liberation, here we come. <laughs> okay, so we have to understand how to practice this Sankhya Yoga. All right, so we'll go ahead here. Lord Kapila describes about the characteristics of Purusha. Purusha actually means the Supreme Lord. But anybody who thinks they're the Supreme Lord, then they're also Purush. They, some often living entities think they are the Supreme Enjoyer, the Supreme Person. So text number three describes the characteristics of the Purusha. That first of all, anadi, without a beginning, the soul never takes birth and never dies, right? For the soul, there's no birth and no death. So anadi is unborn. And then atma, the supreme soul, nirguna, transcendental to the material modes of nature. Prakriti para, beyond this material world. Pratyak dharma, perceivable everywhere. Swayam jyoti, self effulgent. Vishvam yena samanvitam, by whom the entire creation is maintained. So that's interesting, some interesting points here which, you know, we want to be the Purusha, we'll find it very difficult to be, uh, to maintain the entire creation and perceivable everywhere, the all-pervading nature, these kind of things, very difficult. No living, ordinary living entity can do that. The actual Purusha is the Supreme Lord. He has all of these different qualities. Text 5 to 7 describe the Jiva Prakriti interactions. All right. So, characteristics of Pradhan. Pradhan. The unmanifested stage of the material nature, right? So described here. Trigunam, combination of the three modes. Avyaktam, unmanifested. Nityam, eternal. Sadasat Atmakam, consisting of cause and effect. Prakritim pra Prakriti. Rahu, they call avishesham, undifferentiated, visheshavat, possessing differentiation. So possessing differentiation, but at the same time undifferentiated. <laughs> Difficult for us to un understand. What is the effect? What is this? That it pos is possessing differentiation? but at the same time is undifferentiated. This is the special nature, pradhan, the unmanifested stage of the material nature. 
go ahead. And then the 24 elements are described. Of course, you know this from Bhagavad Gita. Five gross elements, five tanmatra, ten senses, ten knowledge acquiring, ten, five knowledge acquiring, five working senses. Four internal senses, including the chitta or consciousness. Prakritim prakriti prahu. They call avishesham undifferentiated visheshavat, possessing differentiation. So again we have this, that it's undifferentiated but it possesses differentiation. This is a special nature. Maharaj, there is a hand raised for question. Okay. Let's have some questions. Ashish Prabhu, please go on. That was Pranams, uh, Maharaj. Maharaj, on the previous, this slide, the Pradhan is eternal. This is, this is part of material creation. So, does this always stay, the unmanifested part? Yes. The material creation, the material, you see, sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not, but it's eternal, just like, you know, material nature, earth, water, fire, air, ether, these different elements are eternal. Sometimes they're manifest, sometimes they're not, but they're eternal. So where, where does it stay, in the, in the Mahavishnu? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Dhanwats. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, my question is, what is this mystic realization, Maharaj? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I've been trying to work this out myself. What exactly is this mystic realization? It could mean many things. Prabhupada doesn't actually define it for us, what he means when he talks about mystic realization. He often uses this kind of term, mystic realization, mystic yoga and so on, you know, you, you just have to try to figure out what he, what he means. I'm, I'm really, I really haven't, uh, it could be uh, mystic, what, well, it, it could be simply understanding that we're not the master, that we're the servant. It could be this, that kind of realization, understanding ourselves as simply the tiny part of the Supreme Lord, having a relationship with the Lord as a, as a part and parcel, the master and the servant. But there, we don't, I haven't found any clear place where Prabhupada actually tells us what he means when he's talking about mystic realization. I'm, yes, I'm, Maharaj, it, realization, but this word mystic uh, making me little doubt, that's the, that's the reason I asked. Yes, right. <laughs> mystic, well, mystical meaning not of this world, right? Uh, spiritual world. Not, not easily understood. Something mystical, some mystic powers, then, you know, they have powers beyond the normal person. It's like some kind of magic power, special ability. So mystical realization, mystic realization, what exactly Prabhupada is indicating, I, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> it's not so cut and dry. But if, you, if, if you have any ideas on it, I'd, ha I'd like to hear. You know. Maharaj, actually I heard in one of the lectures that uh, like a human being, also, like, we don't utilize our uh, capability to the extent what is Lord is given. We, like a normal person, use 1% or 2% of the uh, intelligence or knowledge or whatever uh, potencies Lord has given us. And more 
most intelligent person he uses maximum 5%. So 95% of the thing is hidden. Is that correct, Maharaj? Just I want to wait from you. Well, certainly we're not using our full potential. I don't know about the 95%, but it's certainly true that we don't utilize our full capabilities. That is a fact. That is well known. Exactly what percentage we utilize, I'm, I'm not sure of that. Yeah, basically that is internal potency means Lord uh, doesn't reveal everything to the individual. Like that, that is the message uh, Prabhu was telling. Oh. Well, yes, certainly, according to our qualification, you will reveal. All right? It's according, everything depends on how much we've surrendered, how much we're qualified to receive that knowledge. He can reveal to us. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. So it's going to vary from individual. Okay, we'll go ahead here. Here's a quote from Bhagavad Gita. One who understands this philosophy concerning material nature, the living entity, and the interaction of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. Where is this verse found? In Bhagavad Gita, which chapter, which verse? It's written there, Maharaj, 24, 1324. 1324, is it? Yes. Chapter 13. Yes, Maharaj, it's written there. Hmm. Okay, I'm not able to see it. I have somehow I've got some blocking. Okay, so this philosophy about the material nature, of course that was the subject matter of the 13th chapter, material nature, Prakriti, Purusha. So the living material nature, the living entity and the interaction of the modes of nature, we understand it, we're sure to get liberation. This is the benefit, like the benefit of Sankhya, right? Who not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. And so, the Bhagavad Gita is saying the same thing, what is confirmed here in Srimad Bhagavatam. All right, and this is from the purport, chapter 13, text 35. Would somebody like to read this for me? Aral, there is a reading order that is followed in this group, so they will read according to the reading order. Chitta Hari Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this material world is working by the conjunction of the soul and the 24 material elements. One who can see the constitution of the whole material manifestation as this combination of the soul and material elements and can also see the situation of the Supreme Soul becomes eligible for transfer to the spiritual world. These things are meant for contemplation and for realization. And one should have a complete understanding of this chapter with the help of the spiritual master. Bhagavad Gita 13.35. Thank you, Prabhu. All right, so the, the conjunction of the soul and the 24 material elements. Of course, we have a lot of atheistic people in the world. Just earlier tonight, somebody was telling me that their relative didn't believe in the soul. And they, they said it's just all our own uh, sentiments, and that we're, we're blinded by the religious faith. And her atheistic relative was telling her, there's no soul. And when we die, then everything is finished. <laughs> so you get these kind of people. So Prabhupada says, if we can see that the whole material manifestation is a combination of the soul and material elements, and then also the situation of the Supreme Soul. So that's a big thing, understanding 
material elements is okay and the soul, but then the situation of the supreme soul, that's a, a big jump up to put everything into position to see that, that there's a supreme soul over everything. And that's what's necessary to go to the spiritual world. So we have to understand behind everything there is the Supreme Lord. That's important. To get people to believe in God these days, it's not very common. People are so atheistic. Okay, so we have some, it's a big chapter, there's a lot of points and we're going to share up the different topics of the chapter into groups. Right, how many people do we have in the class today? 26, Maharaj. How many? 26. Oh, 26. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four groups. Okay, so, Maharaj, I'll make four groups. Mm -hmm. All right, so then group one, we'll look at verses 10 to 18. And we want you to tell us clearly what is Pradhan and Prakriti? Explain it. And then the 25 elements. Well, that's not difficult. We already looked at that. But then we want you to differentiate Nirguna Brahman from Saguna Brahman. We hope you can come up with some scriptural ev evidence from this to explain to us clearly what is Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman and how to apply it. That's group one. And then group two will define the Mahatattva and you have to explain these different terms because you'll be looking at the different elements, the subtle elements. So consciousness, false ego, mind, intelligence and their presiding deities. So we want to hear about the presiding deities for each of these subtle elements, as well as the Mahatattva. Then group three, dealing with text 31 to 49, summarize the transformations of the gross elements from ether to earth, along with their specific qualities. Again, that's a quick exercise for you, not very difficult. You've covered a lot about creation before, so it should be very easy for you to do that one. And then the final group, looking at text 50 to 71, we want to hear about the universal coverings. Can you explain them to us? And describe the Virata Rup, drawing practical lessons from it. So that will be a, a little interesting for us to hear about the Virata Rup and what we can learn from it. Are there time limit? Sorry? How many minutes? Well, I would think they'll need at least 10 minutes. Okay, manage. Recording stopped. Bhaktir Priya Madhuji Chitta Hari Prabhu, Dayan Nidhi Prabhu, Sadeshyam Prabhu, Sankarshan Prabhu, Sarda Gauravi Madhuji, please join the rooms. Madhuji, Hare Krishna.
Bhakti Bhaktipriya Mataji, please join the room. I'll go into the rooms, check and I'll come back. they feel that 10 minutes is too short a time. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. We have to extend then. And the five more minutes? Yeah. Can it be just 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay, five minutes is gone, so I'll tell them 10 minutes is left. All right. Thank you. Sankarshan Prabhu, please join the room. Which room you were in? You are out now. Sankarshan Chaitanya Prabhu, if you could unmute yourself. Yeah, Mataji, sorry, I'm driving, so I'm unable, and the uh, internet is on and off, so I'm unable to continue in the class. But uh, whenever internet picks up, that time only I'm connecting. So let me let me be here because I don't know which group and uh, what uh, is going to be discussed. So let me be listeners today, please. Okay, bro.
Maharaj, I'm closing all the rooms. They'll join in a minute. As Thank soon as everybody joins, I'll start the recording. Thank you. Recording in progress. Hare Krishna. So, who is the spokesman for group number one? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanda Pranam. Sanatan Guru. Actually, we had uh, uh, group one mainly about the defining Pradhana and Prakriti and then about 25 elements and Nirguna and Saguna. So, we have three uh, devotees representing that. I request uh, Girinani Mataji to say about Pradhan and Pradhan. Thank you, Maharaj Hare Krishna devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, in the verse number 10, 26th chapter, verse number 10, Pradhan has been explained. Girinani Mataji, can you please be louder? Yes, Mataji. Pradhan has been explained in the verse number 10. Uh, Pradhana characteristic has been mentioned as it's a subtle stage, it's undifferentiated sum total of all material elements. When the cause and effect are not clearly manifested, avyakta, it's called pradhana, and the reaction of the total elements does not take place in pradhana, and the pradhana is not the time, pradhana is not jiva or marginal marginal potency of living entities, and condition, <coughs> uh, condition of the material nature immediately previous to its manifestation is called pradhana. It's been mentioned in the 10th sloka, and prakriti is total material elements are manifested by the interaction of the three modes. It's called Prakriti. This has been mentioned about the verse number 10 and 11. So can you give us... It's two characteristic. It's like eternal Nityam and Trigunam, aggregate of three modes. And also Sat, Asat, Atmakum. As Maharaj explained, it consists of cause and effect and Avisesham, Viseshavat. <coughs> differentiator, it has variety. Yeah. So how do you distinguish Pradhan and Prakriti? Pradhana is uh, unmanifested, uh, unmanifested, and man, when it is manifested, it's called Prakriti Maharaj. What about the living entities also being Prakriti? A prakriti, living entities comes under Prakriti Maharaj. Okay, so is, can, is Prakriti can be subdivided? Because there's you know, there's material elements and there's the living entities. There's a difference, right? There's different kinds of prakriti. I'm not sure, Maharaj. Well, you've studied this before. In the in the Ishopanishad, it's mentioned. There's there's uh, so in, there's the. Uh, Para yeah, para and not para prakriti. Para. Yes, right. So para prakriti is the superior prakriti, and apara, the material elements, the living entities, para prakriti, superior prakriti, because it's superior to matter, because it has consciousness, right? But still we're Prakriti. Living entities are all Prakriti. And Krishna describes like that. Aparinamitasthvanyam prakritim vidime param. Besides this material nature of mine, O Arjun, there is a superior energy, which are all living entities. So there's a superior Prakriti. Of course, not mentioned in that section 
of which you were studying, it wasn't mentioned there, but it was studied earlier in the Bhakti Shastri. Okay. So the second point was to describe 25 elements. And in the 11th sloka, uh, 11th verse, it is given that Pradhana is divided in, into different elements, mainly the five gross elements, the five subtle elements, four internal senses, five senses for gathering knowledge, and five outward organs. Uh, Purjashi Mataji, can you explain a few more? Uh, yes, Prabhupada Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, this in 14, verse uh, they have explained uh, means uh, here uh, that uh, subtle senses there are four types mind intelligence ego and uh, consciousness chit like we saw just now in the slide also contaminated uh, consciousness and these are uh, differentiated that means they have distinctions they are different by functions different by characteristics so here in this verse 14 they have explained uh, the false ego or false ego that when a pure consciousness it is contaminated, uh, polluted actually by uh, material contamination uh, or uh, it identifies with the body, uh, then this uh, it, it is said it is situated in false ego or ahankar. That's what have been explained in this 14 verse Maharaj. Okay, yes, there's nothing much there. Yes, I yeah. think in second group uh, it is in detail description about this consciousness, false ego, mind. Okay, yeah. yes. And the third point, Maharaj, it was about Nirguna and Saguna. Yeah. Uh, the other Desham Shandar Prabhu can... Arisha Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. Uh, Maharaj, in Sloka 15, uh, it's mentioned that when uh, Brahman is mixed with Trigunas, uh, it's called as, sometimes called as Saguna Brahman. Uh, it, it, it consists of it, all the 25 elements, including the uh, time element, the Kala. And when in the spiritual world, it's Nirguna Brahman. There is no material contamination. That means the Trigunas are not present. So they're only, uh, they're, uh, Nirguna Brahman is there. It's simple, un unalloyed goodness. In the, in the spiritual world, there's Nirguna Brahman. Yes, Maharaj. I mentioned in the purport that where Nirguna Brahman is found, simple, unalloyed goodness prevails. And where is the Saguna Brahman? Saguna Brahman is in the material world when uh, Nirguna Brahman is mixed with these material modes. Oh. So, can you give me some examples? So, Saguna, what's Saguna Brahman and what's Nirguna? You said the spiritual world is Nirguna and the whole material world is Saguna Brahman? Uh, yes, Maharaj. I just quoted one of the, uh, in the one one line in the purport, stating that in the Nirguna Brahman, where, the, where there is no material contamination, or in the spiritual world, the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, are not present. What about the Saguna Brahman then? The, everything in the material world is Saguna Brahman? Uh, uh, Harik Maharaj. Uh, Yes, Maharaj, yes, uh, in the in the purport it is said that Sakuna Brahman is described as uh, means consisting of twenty five elements, including the time factor, past, present. Twenty five elements, including the time factor. Okay, so what about the deities? How do you view the deity in our temples? Are they Sakuna Brahman or Nirguna Brahman? My understanding is that they are, they are Nirguna, Nirguna. They, are, they are not contaminated. <laughs> uh -huh. You see the deity as being Nirguna, Brahman. So we have also the deity. We have also Nirguna, Brahman in this, in this world, right? If, if the deity is Nirguna, Brahman, So it's also there? Hmm? Yes. So, so could, we, could we extend that and say that all the different large paraphernalia are all Nirguna Brahman? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Midanga, Kartals? Yes, Maharaj. Hmm? Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. And, and again, Saguna Brahman is the the 25 elements mixed with the element of time, was it? 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, does anybody else want to ask any questions to group one? Any of the other devotees have any queries? How can, uh, how can the Brahman, Brahman word is for the spirit? No. So, how can it be material elements be described as uh, Nirguna Brahman? Well, the, mat the material elements are not described as Nirguna Brahman, they're described as Saguna Brahman. Yes, Saguna Brahman. So how can the material elements be considered Brahman, even though they're with material qualities? Would you like to explain? Someone from group one, can you answer? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, may I, uh, Maharaj Hare Krishna Maharaj, may I? Yes, please do. Maharaj? Yes. Yeah, uh, actually, all material things, uh, uh, they are saguna, but when uh, they are used uh, for in the service of the Lord, uh, uh, like all their par paraphernalia, and this, then it, it comes to that stage, Nirguna Maharaj, if uh, maybe I'm wrong, please correct me. Well, uh, it's a, a, her question is, how is it you have in the material, the five, 25 material elements can be Brahman, Saguna Brahman. How is it they're Brahman? They're in the material world. So how does Brahman come into the material world? Harish Maharaj, can I try to explain Maharaj? Yes. Maharaj, it's told in the Chandakya Upanishad that Sarvam Khalidam Brahman, everything uh, is Brahman. And in the Vishnu Purana is mentioned that Parasya Brahmana Shakti. That's uh, everything is an expansion of the energy of the energy of the Supreme Absolute Truth. That's Brahman. That's everything is an expansion of Brahman. Yes. So, yes, right, good. Everything comes from Krishna, right? Yes, Maharaj. And the living entities, we're all Brahman, right? The living entities, although we're here in this material world, we're also Brahman. All yes, living entities are Brahman, we could understand, but the Prakriti that... Uh, well, the Prakriti, Prakriti is also Krishna's energy. It's also the energy of the Lord. So it's also Brahman. But it's come into them, it's in the material world. It's Saguna Brahman. It's... It's certainly Krishna's energy. We have, we have, we know that, right? Apari, bina prakriti ashtada. It's a separated energy. But where does it all come from? It comes from the Brahman. The whole material creation comes from the Brahman. The whole, the whole material cosmic manifestation is all coming. From Mahavishnu, right? At the time of creation, it's all in the body of Mahavishnu comes in. It's Mahavishnu breathes out and the universes come out from his body. All the different elements are there in the form of Pradhan and then it becomes Prakriti, like that. The word Brahman uh, can be used for uh, anything like, you know, Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan, that word Brahman, I mean, it is Parabrahman. Uh, so here, this Brahman is the uh, Prakriti. So it can be used in different ways. The word Brahman can be used. Like Atma is, can be used as mind, consciousness. Even sometimes Atma word is used for body. So, so I think this Brahman word is also used in different... Yes, we're not, yeah. we're not talking about the Supreme Brahman. We're just simply talking about the Brahman is the energy of the Lord. Spiritual. Okay, so now the living entities are Nirguna Brahman. The, the living entities are Nirguna Brahman. Uh, yeah, initially, yeah. Right, they are. But we come into the material world, right? We become influenced by the material nature. We lose okay. a, We lose We become Saguna. Or we, we, uh, we always remain as Nirguna. 
Well, we become covered. We do become covered. The living entity, we, conditioned souls, right? We become covered by the material nature. Spirit soul is always pure, but it becomes covered, just like the sun becomes covered by the clouds. You know, the sun is always pure, but there, sometimes the, the, we, see the cloud, the, we see the sun being covered by clouds. And so the same way the soul is covered by the material energy, but the soul itself is always pure. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, Saguna Brahman, we said, uh, the definition was the 25 elements of the material creation, right? Influenced by the time factor. Doesn't mention about the living entities becoming Saguna Brahman. But we do become conditioned because of our identification with the material energy. <clears throat> Any more comments or questions about this? It's a complex subject, Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. Certainly the deity would be Nirguna Brahman, but we may consider it before the installation that is Saguna Brahman. But then at the time of the installation we invite the Lord to appear into the elements and becomes Nirguna Brahman. And with the installation, the deity installation, the Lord enters into the deity. Yes? Everyone's very quiet. Is it all right? It's, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, uh, conditioned souls are uh, uh, Saguna, and uh, 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 conditioned souls are Saguna. And uh, who are already in this I mean, who are about the modes of all, who are Mukta, those, those are uh, Nirguna, correct? Maharaj? I, I, it's not so not so clear, Prabhu. Could you say it again? All uh, uh, conditioned souls are uh, Sakuna. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, who are uh, 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 elevated from uh, the mods, Mukta, Mukta, those are the Puna. Correct, Maharaj? Yes, right. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead. Group number two, define Mahatattva. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Prabhuji, you will represent Prabhu? Uh, Prabhu. Maharaj, uh, we, we studied in a, in a in, uh, set of uh, shlokas, Maharaj. The first will be led by uh, Nitinath Swapu. Maharaj, here uh, it is mentioned about the Mahatattva. Actually, Mahatattva is basically a breeding source of all varieties of uh, living entities. And also, uh, the living entities are belongs to the spiritual nature. And uh, no material scientific advancement can produce life. The living force comes from the spiritual world and has nothing to do with the interaction of the material elements. That is a conclusion in uh, text 19. And text 20 talks about um, when the Mahatattva was created, it is manifested uh, the material ego and swallowed up by darkness, which covers the cosmic manifestation at the time of dissolution. And the example is given like when a person goes to sleeping mode, he will be inactive and when the uh, sun rises again, he will be activated. And in the text um, 21, uh, talks about um, Vishnu is alone without the accomplishment of his internal energy, his Vasudeva. When he is accompanied by his internal potency, he is called Dwarka Desha. So, here, uh, in order to release from false ego, we need to worship Sankarsana 
in order to uh, free from men mental disturbance we need to worship aniruddha and in order to increase in our intelligence we need to worship pradyumna these are the some of the points in these two three texts maharaj thank you um i haven't got it what you're talking about mahatatva you have to make it clear to me where does it come in the creation where does it come in creation how did it come about what is it it's not clear to me after the supreme personality of god had impregnates material nature with his internal potency then material nature delivers the some cosmic intelligence which is known as hiran maya this takes place in material nature when she is agitated by the destination of the condition that is there in the translation maharaj where's the mahatatva you didn't tell me anything about mahatatva mm where is mahatatva that is a question maharaj where is mahatatva yes But I mean, you spoke a sentence, but there was no mention of the Mahatatva. I was just trying to relate it. Yeah, Mahatatva is uh, actually uh, material this thing, and when Lord uh, glances over Mahatatva, then the uh, production starts. It is a material element, Mahatatva. It's a material element. yeah there is uh, 24 plus 1 which we discussed mara that all 25 elements yeah okay so all 25 elements are the mahatatva 24 are mahatatva and then the time factor and the lord's glance over it makes the uh, material thing spiritual Okay, so is the Mahatatva coming? Is it related to the Pradhan, or is it related to Prakriti? Yeah, it is related to Pradhan. 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 What? What's the relationship? It is uh, this part of material nature which is called Pradhan, as well as Brahman, is impregnated by the supreme personality of God and delivers. varieties of living entities when lord glances over this material elements then the creation takes place and the various living entities comes but, but where what's the mahatatva just tell me what is the mahatatva okay meaning of mahatatva Yeah I I'm, I'm just trying you know you have to define it I, I you, you haven't mentioned anything about the mahatatva you talk you speak about creation but you're not telling me about mahatatva I just want to know you know what is this mahatatva you, which you're supposed to It's do It's the breeding source of all varieties mara <laughs> The breeding um, source of Can all. I add Maharaj Yes Maharaj I mean the same thing uh, like this prakriti when it is uh, agitated by time then uh, the lord will uh, been uh, the, uh, the lord actually impregnates that uh, prakriti with the uh, uh, that agitated by time uh, he impregnates that with the jivas and uh, then the then that will that give rise to the this uh, whole mahatatva maharaj can i add something yes my understanding was <coughs> uh, the unimpregnated uh, is pradhana and impregnated pradhana is mahatatva the unimpregnated what the uh, the the consciousness the unimpregnated consciousness is no the, the material nature uh -huh. which is unimpregnated by the lord Mm -hmm. it's called pradhana uh -huh. and when once the lord uh, uh sights it or uh, injects uh, it uh, uh, sights it uh, through his eyes 
yes. impregnated and then it is called Mahatakwa. Okay. So I'm just trying to distinguish now between the Pradhan and the Mahatatva. So the Pradhan is the unmanifested stage and it's not pregnated, it's, un it's not yet preg preg pregnated by the Lord. But you say the Mahatatva is pregnated. Yes, and and Prabhu was saying it's a breeding ground for all varieties of what living entities. Yeah, because the Lord has already uh, through His eyesight uh, the subtle. Uh, yeah, the uh, glance living. of the Lord. The glance of the Lord carries the living entities and impregnates the living entities into the material nature. Yeah. That is called. Pradhan has become Prakriti already, so we have seen that in the previous section. Prakriti, it has become, uh, it's a differentiated uh, now, and that is impregnated with the jivas, and then we get Mahatma. When you impregnate the jivas into the Prakriti, then it becomes Mahatattva. Yeah. Okay. So when the jivas are impregnated into into the Prakriti, then it becomes the Mahatattva. Yes? Uh, my question is, is the nature has a, uh, when uh, it's only uh, 23rd Tattva, the uh, influence of the time, that's the 24th, the Pradhana has made, which is Pradhana when glance comes on that one, it becomes 25th and it can impregnate, then it converted to the Mahatattva. When the glance comes on to the Prakriti? Yeah, but it No, the 25th element is the time too. 24th is time, 25th is glance. 20, 23 20th element, then uh, time factor is agitated and that becomes Pradhana. This Pradhana when uh, glance comes, with a glance it came from the and it is a three mode of material nature also it comes that one and same time it pregnated that that one and this become Mahatattva. Okay. Right. When the glance of the Lord impregnates the different elements of the material nature, then it becomes the Mahatattva. All right. Now, explain consciousness. And what's the presiding deity of consciousness? Mind. Who did you say was the pres Chitari, Chitari Prabhu, please start. presiding deity of consciousness was? Vasudev. Vasudev. And how did you describe consciousness? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, actually, it is defined as the mode of goodness, which is clear, sober state of uh, understanding, the pursuit of Godhead, which is generally called Vasudeva consciousness, becomes manifest in the Mahatattva. I, uh, I think you're describing pure consciousness. Yeah, pure consciousness. Mahatattva. But it's not always pure, is it? We're yes. looking for a general. I think it should be more general explanation of consciousness. And where, where, what is the source of consciousness? Soul. And where is it found in the body? In the region of heart. Only? Everywhere. It's the whole body, so the consciousness the, it will be through the whole body, Mahatma. Yeah, consciousness will be throughout the body, right? And consciousness, of course, is the symptom of the soul, and and from that consciousness, the whole body is given life, right? And then false ego. Explain false ego. False ego. Mataji, you can just continue, Mataji, because... Ah, 
Okay. So for false ego, um, actually, it's the source of the gross element senses and the mind. Yes. It is a cause of that, and then it is um, uh, presiding deity of that is Sankarshana. But what is that false ego? What you have to tell me, you know. What is it, you know, false ego? How do we dis how do we exhibit it? How do we how do we show false ego? Because I I read from twenty five. Is there something in twenty four, Chitari Prabhu? Uh, false ego arises from the pure consciousness itself, Maharaj. Uh, but it uh, only thing is that like uh, when it is uh, in the contaminated stage. We will have it, it, the pure consciousness will not be there, whereas like uh, uh, it is said here in the purport of Shri Prabhupada that like uh, uh, the misuse of marginal independence, there is a chance of forgetting Krishna. That is a and that will be our fall down. Okay, forgetting and, forgetting Krishna. Yes, and then uh, it is actually especially uh, Prabhupada gives a very wonderful uh, analogy also uh, of the sharp edge of the razor how the spiritual realization should be uh, because like uh, it gives uh, of a person who is uh, uh, shamed with a very sharp uh, razor as soon as his attention is diverted from the activity he immediately cuts his cheek because of the mishandle of the razor so that's the mishandling of uh, the marginal independence will uh, uh, be the uh, reason for our uh, downfall. Hmm. Okay. And uh, another thing we propose experience also is regarding uh, we must not uh, we must come to the stage of pure consciousness. One must be also very careful. The inattentiveness and the carelessness may cause our fall down. And uh, as soon as one deviates from Krishna consciousness, he increases the in the entanglement of the material reaction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they said we, you said Saint Krishna is the presiding deity of false ego? Yes, Lord. So, what about Other, what, what yeah, about Lord Shiva? Lord false ego is characterized uh, as three things that is, uh, by, um, uh, Kartrutvam, Karanatvam, and Karyatvam. That is uh, the doer, instrument, and effect. So, doer here, uh, the, the demigods who are the controlling directors of material affairs, they combine with the senses, that is the uh, instrument, kar, ka, ka, karanatvam, and then uh, the effect is um, the whole, uh, the material objects, that is the effect, the, that is the karyatvam. So, uh, in also, as per in the influence of the modes of nature, that is the three modes, um, this uh, false ego acts as you know, either a serene, active, or dull. That is also given. The three forms it takes. And uh, the whole advancement of this material civilization, whatever we are seeing now, people think, you know, it is advancement, but actually it is a manifestation of the false ego only. False ego, uh, by that only all material things are produced as objects of enjoyment. Um, like Narutama Das Thakur, there is a beautiful song Prabhupada is quoting in text 26 that uh, he laments that when one deviates from pure consciousness of Vasudeva or Krishna consciousness, he become entangled in these, uh, attract these objects of material enjoyment, these material activities. Uh, so we have to give up that, uh, this temporary, you know, enjoying this uh, nature. And then in the text 10, 27, the false ego that evolves uh, into the mind. And uh, from the mind, the thoughts and reflections uh, that give, uh, give rise to desire like for, uh, the symptoms of the mind are acceptance and rejection we know that uh, it, you know, whenever there is a favorable situation for sense gratification the material mind will accept it and when there is a uh, in this one unfavorable it will reject so what we have to do is we have to uh, as long as this material uh, mind is in the material platform it will do this uh, um, you know uh, over in this asat platform but then when um, uh, a person, when the mind is fixed in Krishna consciousness, <clears throat> it will not hover between acceptance and rejection. It will be fixed. Uh, it will uh, on a particular subject matter. Like uh, it will not be a, a no more material nature. It will have. All right. 
So should we worship, can we worship Lord Shiva to get rid of false ego? Lord Shiva is worshipping Lord Sankarsana. So in that, in that way we can take shelter of Lord Shiva. Please give mercy of Lord Sankarsana. Okay. All right. What about the mind? The presiding deity is who? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, presiding deity for the mind is Aniruddha. Okay. Uh, who is in the form of the four hundred form, the blackish blue uh, uh -huh. color. Yes. What about? And, uh, by worshiping him, we can free uh, from agitation of acceptance and uh, rejection. Uh -huh. This mind is called mana or chitta. I'm sorry, not mana, chitta. And uh, uh, next comes intelligence, that is buddhi. You tell me more about the mind. What's the function of the mind? Function of the mind. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you're supposed to explain. Explain the mind. What's mind doing? Uh, I explained no, that acceptance and uh, determine that uh, rejection, uh, sankalpa, vikalpa, um, thoughts and reflections. Okay. Thinking, willing. Yes. Desires, right? Desires, yes. It gives rise to evolve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what about intelligence then? Intelligence gives us the uh, power of discrimination. Yes, right. Uh, which is right, which is wrong. Mm hmm. And uh, in a way, it is called, uh, which is wrong is called uh, Viparyasa, and which is right is called Nishchaya. And uh, the, the intelligence is the master of the senses, although mind uh, and uh, senses, senses are. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, without, without, without the assistance of uh, intelligence, the senses cannot finally act because which is right, which is wrong are being decided by the intelligence. And uh, Sri Prabhupada says that intelligence can be achieved only through Krishna consciousness. Hmm. Okay. And uh, um, Sri Prabhupada says, that by Krishna consciousness or with the intelligence, uh, we will come to know uh, the things as they are. Right. And oh. Mr. Prabhupada here even explains uh, the importance of uh, getting a doubt. One has to doubt everything in the beginning. Unless one starts doubting, he will not analyze it. And Sri Prabhupada even says that this analyzing, analyzing, and then coming to a, a proper conclusion is the right process of the uh, intelligence. Mm. Yes. And, and Sri Prabhupada here, he says that uh, it starts, I mean, the doubt should start that whether the living entity is matter or spirit. So from that, it should start, and then it should conclude with the right nishtaya. So, uh, Prabhupada also says, uh, we should doubt everything uh, so that we can analyze it properly. And at the same time, we should know that whatever is specified by the authority, that is Acharyas or scripture especially, is doubtless, should be taken as doubtless. Mm. Okay, very nice, yes. And uh, uh, Prabhupada also says that uh, this analysis about uh, mind is very clearly given uh, by uh, Patanjali, this Patanjali yoga system, and also by Kapila Deva in Sankhya Yoga, this analysis of uh, Viparyaya and Nishtaya. Yes, and the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali also talks about the mind, controlling the mind. Oh, all right. Okay, let's go on. Group number three. Who's the spokesman? Harikshamaraj, Nathana. 
Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Maraj, after understanding this, uh, the, uh, the uh, evolution of the false ego mind and the intelligence, and from text number 31, uh, it speaks about the, the manifestation of the Indriyas. Uh, the Indriyas, it manifests the false ego in the mood of uh, Rajagunas, and it creates the two types of the Indriyas. One is the uh, five action senses and then five knowledge acquiring senses. Whereas the five action senses, it uh, depends upon the, the energy, the vital energy, whereas the uh, uh, knowledge acquiring senses, it depends upon the intelligence. And, and 32, from 32 onwards, it uh, uh, describes the, uh, the manifestation of the uh, first the Tanmatras and then from the Tanmatras, the, all the elements and then the characteristics of these uh, Tanmatras and the elements are uh, explained. Uh, like in 33, uh, the sound, uh, the, how the sound, ele the element, um, Tanmatra of the, uh, it's appeared, the sound, the Tanmatra of ether, which is the, uh, which gives the idea of the uh, object. It gives the idea of the object and indicates the presence and then the, the, by sound we can understand. And then the, uh, th the next one is in 34, it's, uh, it explains about the ether, which is the provides the space for the living entities and then externally and internally and acts as the base for the prana, senses and the mind. And 35 and 36, <coughs> it explains ab about the, the touch, which is the tanmatra of the air. So the characteristics of the uh, touch is like <coughs> softness, hardness, cold, heat, and are distinguished attributes. Text number 37 uh, speaks about the air, the element of air, which is moving and mixing uh, leading sense objects to senses and giving life to this energy. And 38 and 39, it uh, deals with the, with the uh, element of the uh, form, the Tanmatra for the fire, which allows the understanding of the dimensions and the quality and the individuality. And in the next verse, the text number 40, it deals about the, the related element, which is the fire, which is the ability to cook, to digest and to destroy the coal and give rise to the hunger also. And 41 and 42, it deals about the taste, the tanma, which is the tanmatra for the water. So in the following verse, in the text number 43, it deals about the water, the, what are the characteristics of the water which is moistening, making balls, causing the satisfaction, giving life and relieving, the th uh, relieving from the thirst and softening. 44 and 45 deals about the smell, which is the tanmatra of the air. And then when the, the earth is dealt in the uh, next verse in 46, which is the place for the sustenance of all the beings, all the living entities. And in 47 to 49, it summarizes the, all the, uh, how from each Tanmatra, the, uh, the elements have been created. Okay, so, <clears throat> can you tell us more about the, the connection? between the different elements, the gross elements, the five gross elements. Yeah, it's from the first uh, uh, gross elements. It's again from the same like the, the subtle to the gross, it, it, the, the manifestation, it starts from subtle to the gross. Yes. Yeah. And the ether, how is it, the, which particular sense is connected to the ether? Um, the ether, it is the tanmatra, is the sound. So which particular sense organ will be created? The sound, it's uh, by the ear. We can visualize, uh, realize the sound by the ears. Okay, yes. So from the sound, the, the ether, and then the, from the ether, it's the uh, air is being created. That is the connection. From the air, ether, it is air is created. 
And with air, what's the quality which is unique to air? The, the air is the, the, the Tanmatra is the touch. We can feel, the, we can touch the feel. Is the there air. also the sound air. in air? Yeah, the sound is also present in the air. So each, term, each element, when it goes higher and higher, the, the previous elements are also being present in that one. We can feel all the other previous the Tanmatras also. Uh -huh. So which organ, which sense organ is, pr is pr created with the, the... The skin, the skin is for the air. The skin, okay. And then the next element is the fire. Next element is the fire. Then the Tanmatra is the, 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 the form, the form. The form, the, the element is the, the, our eyes. So from the eyes, we can visualize the, the form. Yes. And then from the form, uh, the fire, then the next one is the, the water. The Tanmatra for the water is the taste. And then the, the related, uh, the, the, uh, the Indriyas is the, our tongue. So by tongue, we can realize the, the taste. Okay. And from water, the next element comes, this is the air. And the air, the Tanmatra is the, uh, the smell, and then the related uh, Indriya is the, uh, the, the nose. By nose, we can uh, realize the smell. Okay, yes, good. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I, does anybody have any questions for this group? If there are no questions, then we'll go on to group four. Thank you, Maharaj Tariq. Group four, spokesman. Hare Krishna, Dr. Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, so, we are uh, given the question, explain the universal coverings. There are seven layers of the universal coverings, uh, water, air, fire, sky, ego, mahatattva and pradana and then the um, universe is in the shape of an egg and the Supreme Lord as a Virat Purusha situates himself in that golden egg uh, and this is lying on the water, the golden egg is lying in the water and he divides uh, and he divided it into many herbs, uh, sorry departments. What so, is it, what is this water? The golden egg is lying in the water. That is the Garbhodaka Ocean, Maharaj. Oh, the Garbhodak, what, 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 the golden egg. So it's the Garbhodak Ocean is in the egg, is it? Uh, actually, the gar uh, the golden egg is uh, floating on the Garbhodaka Ocean. The golden egg is floating on the Garbhodak Ocean. And the Garbhodak Ocean is in the bottom half of the universe, right? Yes, Maharaj. So, the, what is the golden egg? What does it represent? Uh, it is the, each universe, like uh, it is said in this uh, shloka, uh, that etad um, andam visheshakyam. So the universe is in the shape of an egg, and all the 14 planetary systems are in this universe. And uh, the Virat Rupa is uh, where all the 14 planetary systems are in each part of the uh, Virat Rupa. And so the un but I asked you, where is the, where is the universal egg? You said it was in the Garbhodak Ocean. But the Garbhodak Ocean is in the universe. But you tell... Hmm? Yeah, I think you've got it wrong. Are you sure it's the Garbhodak Ocean? The water, you're speaking about the water. I asked you what, what the water was. You said it's the Garbhodak Ocean. But then you speak about the universal egg floating in the water. So, you know, I just can't understand how the u universal egg can be floating in the Garbhodak Ocean. Because the Garbhodak Ocean is in the universe, that is in, in the universe. 
Because there's a Karana Dakashai. Karana Ocean. Karana Ocean, yeah. The Kajo Ocean, if you like. The Kajo Ocean. And all the universes are coming out from the body of Mahavishnu and they're floating on the Kajo Ocean. Right? There the universal egg is. Not on the Garbhadak Ocean. Garbhadak Ocean is in the universe. Right? Yes, Mother. Thank you, Mother. So, go ahead. Explain more. Explain again. I'll pass it on to my other uh, devotees who are in my group, Mother. Okay. Uh, from uh, Sister Dara, Supreme Person of God, Virat Kupa, situated himself in the Golden Egg, which is lying on the water which is divided into the many departments. Now, uh, the inside of the golden egg, the uh, Lord as a Garbhodaksha Vishnu lying in the bottom of that one and that half a spill which is by the weight of that one and that from the uh, navel that the uh, lotus flower is comes out of from that the uh, one of the petals will that uh, Rama is lying and there uh, one and another all other particle element and uh, Pradhana is lying and then it is glanced with the Lord it has been impregnated with the with living entities and a three mode of material nature and everything with it comes up slowly from that and uh, uh, creation will start from that side. So this is the and when the creation starts the uh uh we should take a Virat Kupa and with that one each organ, each organ which is as a uh, body has a senses to perceive that uh, that and with that there is a uh, presiding deity for representing that organ. So there is an uh, organ which, and then the deity presiding uh, uh, on that organ which is represented that uh, function of that organ and uh, controlling that organ. So this is like that comes the Grand Trooper and like in the 54 uh, Shiroka, first of all mouth appeared in that one and it comes the force of the speech and the god of fire, Agni Devta, is presiding that of the organ. Then nose appears, nostril. From nostril, olfactory sense means the smelling is come. And the vital air, the prana as well, be, will be there. After that, in a 50 percent, after the olfactory sense, means the uh, smelling sense, because it comes through the air, the wind god of the sense, uh, smelling uh, uh, sense is the presiding daughter and lives on the dead sense. So then, the eyes come up in the universal form, the sense of sight, which comes with the sun god, because eyes can see on when the light is there in the dark room. Eyes cannot see. If light is not there, because person can see only when light goes to the eyes and gets reflected. Unless light is not there, how precise your eyes are there? Or a blind person or a person with the eyes is no use. Both are same. So light is the main thing through which a person can see. So the sun god is there who lived, made us to see. And so this is a presiding uh, uh, light uh, or deity for the wizard. Then we appear in the pair of ears. Ear is the uh, having an auditory sense, a hearing sense. It's big parlor are the presiding deity who lives in all of the direction also. After that, uh, next this comes the slogan so that's the universal of the Lord, the Vairaj Pusha, manifest in his skin. And there upon the hair, his skin, hair, mustache, beard appears, and all are hurt and drop drugs. His medicine will have manifested. And then his genitals are appeared. And all these are the semen in that one. There's a faculty of procreation. The presiding dog uh, and the god who presides over the water is appear of that. Who's the Varuna, Devta, is the presiding deity for the semen and the faculty of procreation. This is the that one. Next up here is the inner. The dedication that there is a god of death which is feared throughout as the universe has appeared here. And then in the 58, there is a uh, two hand of the universal form. Other than Radhi Prabhu, just please take over. There is no matter from Tam. So from Shloka 58, Maharaj, it says that the two hand uh, I mean two hands are manifested and uh, the presiding deity mentioned here is Indra. So four hands are manifested for power of grasping and dropping the things. Then the next sloka, it is mentioned that two uh, 
the same sloka it is mentioned that legs are uh, manifested for the process of movement and the presiding deities he mentioned is Vishnu. Then the veins, uh, uh, blood veins and uh, to, to uh, I mean veins are manifested to pro uh, process the blood and the deities mentioned here is rivers and deities presiding deities over the veins. So then uh, next loka it is mentioned that uh, uh, abdomen uh, appeared uh, and then the, it, it gives the feeling of the hunger and thirst. So ocean, the samudra is the uh, presiding deity. Then uh, uh, sloka number 60 uh, uh, manifested and uh, then from uh, appeared then intelligence, then false ego, and then consciousness. So mind, the the, the deities, it is chant. Then uh, for false ego, it is Lord Shiva, and for the consciousness, uh, uh, Lord Vasudeva. So this is up to Maharaj so, uh, from so, 59. To, so what's the uh, practical uh, lesson? What's the practical? Sorry, Maharaj. What's the practical lesson? Right? We said you have to describe the Virata Rup, drawing practical lessons from it. Yes. Practical lessons. Yeah. Because there are slokas up to 72, we have 71 we have to cover, so the last part they will explain the uh, okay. practical. Yeah. Hare Krishna. The Devatas, they wanted to wake up the Virata Purusha, and they are entering to the parts of, uh, they like a god of fire is entering to Virash, Virata Purusha mouth, but uh, he did not wake up. Then sun god entering into the eyes, but Virat Purusha is not waking up. But in the, uh, after that, they are trying, but uh, uh, only when Vasudeva entered the heart along with the Chitta, then only Virata Rupa uh, rose up from the uh, water. Uh, then uh, 71 it is mentioned the pranas, mind, intelligence cannot wake up the sleeping individual soul without the intervention of super soul. This is up to 71. Where is the Virata Rup situated? He is situated in uh, Maharaj. Where? Where? Is there such a thing as the Virata Rup? Is it actually manifested or is it just some imagination? Uh, it is imagination, imaginary form. Uh, so, we would describe the Virata Rup like that, eh? or there is, it's just some imaginary form? Yes. This is Maharaj, in an explanation, yeah. the black Rupa is there. And basically, when uh, uh, when uh, uh, nature has been created or uh, materialization has been done, that time, the all the uh, material elements and the deities, optimizing deities for that organ and function of the material nature has been established. And they have been given a shape of a human body. With the, with the human video, you can know, uh, Sakara Rupa that term. And that image, that imagine image has been uh, uh, covered whole of the material, or whole of the golden essence, whole of the Brahman, whole of the universe. And that this, the, the each function of that creation has been controlled by a one, like a, a sense of hearing or sense of vision. In the, all of the living entity who have a sense of vision will be controlled by the sun god. So, the, even the, suppose eyes will be, everybody have different eyes. Suppose human eyes are different than a, eyes of a, when a fly or, or when a sky. But they all are, the, uh, gross, uh, uh, what you, uh, gross sense may be different. But, but the main uh, vision, main, the main uh, perception of sense will be same and that has been controlled by the, the presiding deity. Now, to represent them in our form, is that the Virat Rupa has been told and that is the imaginary part in the whole of the universe. And this imaginary part also ultimately is controlled by the 
Vasudeva, which is living in the heart of that one, and he has a mouth also. So, with that, it's been controlled. That is the thing described. And finally, it has been told in this, uh, in after uh, the last shloka, that the one becomes joyful by discharging devotional service in the joyful attitude. And one can understand the signs of God or Krishna conscious. Otherwise, it's not possible. The analytic study of element of material nature and concentration of the mind upon the super soul or as a sum and substance of the sankhya philosophical system. So another thing Bhajan can explain, the life in our body, super soul and soul both are there. Super soul is detached from the, completely from the body and everything, so that is the thing. But soul because it gets attached to the body or the material thing, so it becomes contaminated. So when the soul start doing devotional service, it becomes start getting detached from the material nature or material element and he she become pro, uh, uh, start getting purified and uh, goes to the getting ready or being eligible to serve the Lord or go to the back to God. So that is the reason and that's only that the and, and how it is happened, how the devotional service can be done and it's been turned, turned to the uh, super soul that has been called substance of the sum and substance of the Sankhya perfectal system that has been described here. Ultimately, it is a devotional service unto the super absolute truth. That is the final touch of this chapter. Okay, very good. Yes. I agree. All right, anybody has any other questions? No? Okay, we'll go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, I think Sudhir, I think we have any questions from uh, Bhagavad Okay. Hmm? The practical lessons, what we can draw from Virat Krupa Maharaj, I just did not uh, get it. Practical lessons? That we need the soul, and su we need the super soul there before anything can happen. The soul and the super soul. All of these senses, organs and so on are there, but without the, sen without the presence of the soul and the super soul, they're useless. Right. Prabhu, like that is explained in the last uh, 10 shlokas, that uh, Virat Rupa was not getting aroused unless the Vasudeva comes into the heart. So it means unless the super soul, the three personality of Godhead, it will be in the center of the our heart, the our uh, material body or material function will not be get separated. Similarly, it is said that body, that we have a soul and super soul. The super soul is completely detached, and the soul gets detached from the material uh, contamination and get attached to the soul by doing the devotional service. We will not able to get detached and we will not able to go back to it, uh, back to uh, uh, Godhead. So that is the main, and for that one is called that the concentration of the mind upon the super soul are the sum and substance of the Sankhya philosophical system. This is the final message from this chapter. Okay. Yes. Thank you. We'll go ahead. <laughs> All right. This is the final, final verse of the chapter. Therefore, through devotion, Detachment and adv advancement in spiritual knowledge acquired through concentrated devotional service, one should contemplate that super soul as present in this very body, although simultaneously apart from it. Right? So, this is the idea, Sankhya, contemplation of the super soul which we'll be hearing about in chapter 28, when we talk about Astanga Yoga, but mentioned here in the Sankhya Yoga also, devotion, detachment, and advancement in spiritual knowledge. Well, they're all together, right? Bhakti brings Gyan and Vairagya, acquired through concentrated devotional service, right? So one should contemplate that super-soul as present in this very body. 
So by devotional service, we contemplate the super soul. In this very body, although simultaneously apart from it, of course, the super soul may be in the body, but it's apart at the same time, it's different from it. So that is the concluding verse, the yogi contemplating the super soul. And here's Prabhupada's quote from the purport. The analytical study of the elements of material nature and the concentration of the mind upon the super-soul are the sum and substance of the Sankhya philosophical system. The perfection of the Sankhya Yoga culminates in devotional service unto the Absolute Truth. You see, we're explaining about Sankhya philosophy according to Devahuti Putra Kapila, not the atheist Kapila. There's atheistic Sankhya and the Vaishnava philosophy of Sankhya. We are studying the Vaishnava presentation of Sankhya philosophy. And the perfection of that Sankhya is devotional service unto the Supreme Truth, the, the Supreme Lord. So it's described here, the analytical study of the elements, which we did this evening, we looked at the different elements of material nature, and the concentration of the mind upon the super-soul. That will be explained later, 28. That's the, that is the real sum and substance of the Sankhya, philosophy. Okay, are there any questions? No hands raised, Maharaj. The Rilant Mataji has raised her hand. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Maharaj, could you please clarify about the Saguna Nirguna? Is it related with any tangibility? Is it related to what? Tangible, tangible. Is it Saguna and Nirguna. Is it measurable? Is it measurable? Well, how do we dis certainly if if we can if you are able to identify the modes of nature, you know where the modes of nature are taking part and where you're not in the modes of nature. You can understand someone who's um, somebody being transcendental to the modes of nature and somebody being influenced by the modes of nature. And we'll see that also in chapter 29 when we talk about devotional service in the modes. The devotional service can be in the modes, so certainly Brahman can also be influenced by the modes. We should be able to identify the modes of nature. We know what, like, passion and ignorance, Ignorance, violent mood to do harm to others, and passion, a lot of material desires and ambition. You want success, you want to be recognized. And the mode of goodness, mode of goodness, we want to get rid of our sinful reactions. We're looking to uh, purify ourselves from our bad karma. That's the mode of goodness. So these kind of things. And so Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. N Nirguna Brahman, the, the, it's pure goodness. It's completely dedicated for the Lord, the service of the Lord. So the spiritual world is Nirguna Brahman, the whole spiritual world. And we said the deity, when we invite the Lord to appear in the material elements, then the deity also becomes Nirguna Brahman. Yes, Maharaj. So we can understand like uh, Nirguna means it has a form but has a spiritual form. Uh, Saguna, it has a form but a material form. Is it correct, Maharaj? Well, we're talking about elements of material nature. They all have forms, yes. 
the elements of material nature certainly are forms. The, the for, there will be forms in the spiritual world, everything has, will have forms. You know, there's, uh, there's in, the, in the spiritual world, we hear about uh, the homes of uh, the Lord, Chintamani, Prakarasadma, Sukhalpa, Briksha, like that. His home is uh, made of Chintamani. And uh, all the trees are desire trees, they, you know, everything has form. Even though it's near Guna Brahma, and still it will have form. And it will appear like material form, but it can be spiritual. And we cannot distinguish, just like you see a transcendent, you may see a very elevated devotee, you may not recognize that he's a transcendentalist. We see the example of uh, Pundarik Vijaniri. When Pundarik Vijaniri came to Mayapur, Pundarik Vijaniri would disguise himself to look like a materialist, and just to fool the people, just to let people think he was, but actually he was a very, very elevated devotee. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to call, say, Pundarik, my father. When the Lord was in his Radha Bhava, he would refer to Pundarika's father because he was actually Radharani's father, Maharaj Vrishabandhu, Maharaj Vrishabandhu in Krishna Lila. But he would look like a materialist just to fool the minds of people who didn't look to actually, they would only look at the externals. So sometimes people, we look at the external, we think this is material. We have to see the spiritual nature within. You have to look deeper. It's not enough to just look at the external symptoms. You have to look within. Right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So, Maharaj, it's like it's so subtle. So, we need to find the Nirguna means we need to have some spiritual chakshu, something like that, Maharaj. We need to what? Uh, spiritual eye, like spiritual vision. Well, what we, we, we would say, Shastra Chakshush, you have to see through the eyes of Scripture. We don't just see with our material eyes, but you have to see through the eyes of Scripture, see with the eye of knowledge. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, just wanted to know about this anal analytical study of the elements of this material nature. Um, how is it uh, like helping us to, uh, yeah, to become Krishna conscious? Well, <laughs> well, it's Krishna's energy. Uh, one thing is. You can see how, how everything is systematically created by the Lord. You know, if you read the, the Christian Bible, they simply say God created the world in seven days. You're not told anything about it. But here in Srimad Bhagavatam, we're given an elaborate description of the different elements, one after another, along with the different sense organs. And you can see how everything relates. It's very systematic. It's a very uh, clear and scientific description of how the different elements come about, particularly in terms of the, you know, the gross elements and their different qualities. And you can see the progression. So this helps a lot for us to understand that there is design there among the elements, among the ordinary no, people don't know this. Nobody knew this. Without reading Srimad Bhagavatam, we wouldn't know this. It's some very interesting information. It shows the design within the universe. It shows the intelligence of the Creator. And it shows 
how these different elements actually came into existence, which is the beginning of the creation, right? The creation of Lord Vishnu, the initial creation. People think Brahma is the creator. Well, that's secondary creation. The initial creation is done by Lord Vishnu, and we need to know about it. We should know about it. We should, it should be clear. Because, well, if you understand, then you can explain it to others. You can show them the beauty behind the material creation. You know, people are appreciating beauty. Oh, isn't it so nice? Everything looks so beautiful. They don't know anything about who did it, who designed it, how, how did it come about. So we, we don't want to be so superficial and just attracted to externals. We want to know about everything clearly. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, like especially today I could appreciate how the advancement of civilization is due to the false ego. We, are, we actually think that it is advancement, but actually the false ego is progressing. The people uh, associated with, uh, I mean the false ego associated with the three modes is actually making the variety of uh, uh, the so-called, uh, you know, the material, variety of material enjoyment is created by the false ego. So we can explain through this that, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, this variety, the whole thing that you are seeing is covered by the false ego. That's why it's shown as the enjoyment, not actually as the uh, Lord's creation. No. Yes. False ego is covering us. Yes, right. False ego is coming in. One important point which we didn't bring up, which we should have discussed, was about the creation of mind and intelligence, right? Where do, how, does, how does the mind come about? Where is it created from? <laughs> yes, who was, ta who was doing the mind? Explain the mind. Do you remember how the, how is the mind created? Where is it created from? False ego in what mode? Mode of goodness. The mode of goodness. And where is intelligence coming from? Rajas. Huh? Rajas passion. Passion. Yes. Right. Now sometimes that puzzles people. They think, you know, intelligence should be higher than the mind. <laughs> so you should note that, that the, the mind is a creation from false ego in the mode of goodness, and intelligence is false ego in the mode of passion, right? Why? One reason given, we, we, you know, we, we tried to find out some reason for, to explain this. We came up with a reference from Ayurvedas, and they said that uh, the intelligence is often planning, whereas the mind just simply acts and desires to do things. And so the, the planning is more in the mode of passion. You know, planning, I'm going to save this money, I'm going to do that, I'm going to go there, I'm going to buy this. That kind of planning, that's more passion. But the mind's desire just to act, that's more in the mode of good, that's the mode of goodness, without thinking too much. So that's how Ayurvedic described it. Okay? There's one more question from Gopijana Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, Maharaj, uh, how can uh, I have two questions? One is this intelligence. Uh, if if mind is the mode of goodness, then it is superior to the uh, mode of passion. Then, but uh, it is says that intelligence is superior to the mind. How can we understand this? <laughs> well, I tried to explain to you. I told you that the intelligence is more planning. But the mind just simply desires. So the, that desire is, is the mode of goodness. But the, in, the planning, planning for our sense gratification, that's the mode of passion. 
So we say higher than the mind is intelligence because intelligence is meant to discriminate. Right? Because intelligence is discriminating over the desires. You know, the mind desires, I want some money, I'm going to rob the bank. Intelligence said, just a minute, don't do that, you know. It's going to get you in big trouble. So intelligence... So in that sense, so in that sense it is called uh, superior, but not in the sense of what of goodness is uh, inferior to what of passion, not in that sense. Right, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. And Maharaj, another one, uh, this... The Brahma Jyoti. Uh, Brahma Jyoti is also can be called as Nirguna Brahman. Yes. And, and my question was, if it is a Nirguna Brahman, then how is uh, the, the, the Gnanis who, who has a desire to merge with the Lord, that means they are under mode of uh, goodness to possess something. So they can be merging into the Brahma Jyoti. How can I understand this or am I lacking something? How can you understand how the Gyanis merge into the Brahma Jyoti? Yeah, because they have a desire. That means they have a guna. They have some contamination. So, I mean, maybe I'm I'm not able to... Well, if they do have the desire, if they do have desire like that, <coughs> but they won't, be, they won't stay for long in the Brahma Jyoti. They'll come back again. That's why we, it's said that people who achieve that impersonal liberation, you know, arora krishrena parampatam tada patanti adro nadreta yasma dangraya. They fall back to the material world. So they may achieve, they may enter into that Brahma Jyoti, but then they will come back after some time because they have desire. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. But some, some are Brahma Gyanis. Yeah, those who don't, those who don't have the desire, they just are simply satisfied. Yeah, then they can. They stay. will stay there long. Yeah, okay. right. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Okay. All right. So I think we'll finish here tonight. So we'll see you on Monday night. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Go back to Brenda ki. Yeah.